Okay, it says we're live now. <laughs> Someone give me a thumbs up in the chat room if it, if we're actually if it's actually true. Okay, so all right, it says we're live. So okay, all right. Okay, so I wanted to do kind of an impromptu video talking about some of the uh, things that I do when I'm doing I have to do a wireless camera. Uh, I know that there's been some interest about that in the past, and so I um, thought I'd not only make the video, but make it a live stream. So, yeah, there we go. So we got a couple people saying we're, saying we're we're good to go. All right. So um, I'm going to preface this by saying that my solution isn't necessarily a recommended solution. I had to go about this. I mean, well, I don't do it enough of this to justify putting any serious money into it. So I had to come up with a solution that was pretty. Um, pretty inexpensive, uh, very budget friendly. And so I spent a lot of time shopping around trying to find something. And, and there are a bunch of inexpensive solutions on the market, uh, but a lot of them are HDMI based and you read the reviews and the range is absolutely terrible. And so I, I, I took a long time to actually make, make a decision on what I was gonna get. And I'll just go ahead and bring that out. So I'm keeping, it, keeping this bag here. The, the solution that, that I'm currently using is from IDX, the same company that makes the famous breaking batteries. This is the CW3. Uh, this is an SDI based unit. Uh, I'll pull out a few other things here. I'm actually going to go through the process of hooking this up um, so that you, can, you guys can see what it actually looks like. So, um, so here's the, this is the transmitter unit and this is the receiver unit. Um, you probably notice the receiver doesn't have any external antennas which kind of bugged me because I wanted to be able to do some larger antennas on the receiver to make sure I had decent range. Uh, the transmitter's antennas actually are some you can swap out, and I do have you know, somewhere in here a couple other antennas. Yeah, there we go. So I have a couple of, a couple of these guys, um, which do help to increase the range a little bit. Uh, I do like that these are nice and small. Um, and, uh, you know, so far these have worked okay, but... Uh, um, there's there are some issues. Um, so first of all, one of the issues you have when you're dealing with wireless is latency. You know the amount of delay uh, that there is between the video being transmitted out of the camera and the time it's received at the receiver and can then actually be brought into your switch. Uh, these are, are supposed to have a delay of less than one millisecond, which is significantly less than one frame. It's, it's 60 frames per second. One frame is about 16 milliseconds. So you're talking about less than um, yeah, a sixteenth of a frame of delay. Nobody's ever going to pick up on that. Um, so, you know, in that, in that way, there it works pretty well. Uh, the manufacturer quotes this as being able to do 1080p at up to 60 frames per second. However, I ran into an issue with that. So, turns out they only support uh, 3G level A with with these guys. And so, the the 3G level B that I get out of my Sony cameras and even my Blackmagic camera. It doesn't really work properly with this. Um, I'm going to go through the process here. Uh, and another, another thing, when I, when I got the camera, I had to go budget on that as well. So uh, this is a Sony, I always, have to, I always forget the model number, HXR MC2500. Um, this is, it's only about a $1,300 camera. It's a quarter inch chip. Um, it's not amazing, but that said, the, the video quality coming out of this thing is actually pretty good. The main issue with it um, is the controls on it. It only has one, which you have to repurpose for different things, uh, focus, gain, uh, can do zoom as well. But fortunately, it does have a zoom rocker on it, so uh, I don't, you don't have to use the ring for that. But that that really is the only control you have on this camera, and so you kind of have to choose between gain or focus. So you either do autofocus and adjust the gain, or uh, manual focus on the with a ring and use auto gain or lock it at a certain gain. Either way, it's a little bit awkward, but um, the camera does work. Uh, the main issue I have with this is it only has an HDMI out, and these this wireless system only has SDI. And so you have to do a converter. Now, uh, while I'm getting that out, I'll go through and maybe answer a couple of questions in the chat room. So, um, so good day, hello, how's it going? Um, 
So Satinja are using a CW3 with a Sony FS5. Yeah. As long as you're not doing 1080p, that, that would be a decent solution. So what I've got is kind of awkward. So I'm going to go ahead and like slide the transmitter up on top of the camera here. Whoops, I put that on sideways. I do that every single time. All right, so straighten that up. Pop that up on, side, on top of the camera. All right. And then there's video. Let's see. So I've got HDMI to SDI converter here. All right. Oh, Thomas Hendricks asked, asked if I consider using NewTek NDI Connect Spark. I haven't looked at that. And when I when I bought this stuff, the NDI stuff wasn't hadn't really hadn't become popular yet, at least. So, uh, all right. So, okay. it's kind of a rat's nest of cables. This whole thing is a little bit awkward, to be frank. I mean, it's, it's not a perfect solution by any stretch of the imagination. Fortunately, fortunately it does actually work. Um, and as I get a little further into the video, I'll just share with you guys an experience I had with another system that I bought. Okay, so... Alright, so, yeah, here we go. So, power for the transmitter. And I'll just going to be powered off a battery here in a minute, so... Yeah, so Tinder is saying he doesn't have trouble with level A, level B. And you won't unless you're shooting 60, 50 or 60 frames per second um, in 1080p. But that's kind of my standard go-to resolution for most of the stuff that I do. So, All right, so this is powered off USB. And then, yeah, so and then HDMI going to the camera's HDMI output. So, yeah, awkward, I know. But... Fortunately, it does actually work. And then on the other end, the battery pack, 12 volt battery pack that also has a USB port on it as well. So, plug that guy in. All right. So with that, you just, you know, camera operator just wears that on their on their belt. Um, so fire up the camera here. Transmitter is live. Receiver I haven't hooked up yet, so I'll do that. So, yeah, so Never Ends Productions. Uh, let's, let's answer an email from you today. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I'm out of outlets there. Oh, there's one behind me here. All right, so receiver, plug that guy in. And then connect an SDI cable, and this SDI cable does connect over to the switcher. All right, so now camera is working, Tra the transmitter is receiving video, the receiver has a link and is receiving video. However, if I switch to that input, it's dead. There's nothing there. And the reason for that is because of the in incompatibility between level A and level B. Um, this particular camera actually only outputs 60 frames per second, so every so it's always level A or level B coming out of here. Um, at least it used to be until Blackmagic up updated the firmware on this to support level A. So I have switched this uh, HDMI to SDI converter to level to level B. Or, yeah, the level A. So I'm sorry. Yeah, so level A. So now the problem is the video that this receiver is outputting is not recognized by by the switcher. So what I have to do is take the output of this guy and grab cable, SDI cable, and then I'm going to run that to. And this is going to be off off camera for you guys, but I have the decimator MDHX over here. So, yeah, there we go. It's receiving 3G level A. And then I'll just connect the SDI cable up to that. And switch to that camera input, and there we go. So, there we go. That's, that's video coming in wirelessly from that camera. So, it's certainly not a pretty solution. 
um, but it does work. Now, there are, there, aside from the obvious level A, level B mess that I have to deal with, um, there's also an issue of reconnecting. So if this transmitter goes out of range or there's interference, I haven't had any, any interference issues, but if it goes out of range or whatever, quite often the receiver doesn't automatically relink. And so you have to power cycle the receiver in order to get it to go. And every once in a while, you also have to power cycle the transmitter. So I'm not sure that I would call this 100% reliable. But um, the times when I've needed to use it, it has worked. So um, you, you, doing this solution with other cameras is a little less awkward. Uh, in fact, let's take a, a minute here and hook this up to my Ursa Mini. I have that handy as well. So in that case, I don't need the battery pack because I can power directly off the cameras. Do you guys have any other questions while I'm doing all this awkward switching? And after I demonstrate this with the Ursel, I'll talk about another, another wireless solution that I did purchase and ultimately had to return because in reality it didn't actually work. So I'm going to put the lens for this one. There it is. Okay. So it's got a camera lens at the moment. And my cinema lenses are packed away. So pop this guy on there. Power it on. All right. Now, the other thing, other issue is I misplaced my shoe for this, and so I'm going to have to just hook up the cables without attaching it to the camera. But nevertheless, that shouldn't be an issue. All right. So both my battery and the camera itself have uh, DTAP connectors on them. So I'm power the transmitter directly off of that and then let's grab a short SDI cable here uh, SDI okay now switch over now the problem here Okay, there we go. All right, so white balance is off, way off on this. Um, switch over to that camera and, oh, there we go. So power the sucker on. You can see it while it's, it's waiting to reconnect here. And this is kind of one of those issues I was telling you about. So I've lost connection, the power cycle, the receiver. All right. Okay, so a couple questions coming in here. Um, use a GoPro and use a video feed wireless cable. The problem with like any wireless Wi-Fi based solution is they have major latency, often awful latency. So uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't trust something like that. Um, so compliments from Australia, appreciate it. Uh, the switcher that I, I'm using is Blackmagic Design uh, Production Studio 4K with 2ME version. So, all right. Um, so, it never ends asking about wireless solution for internet for streaming. So, I use a MoFi network. Um, I forget the exact model number of it. Um, it's it's a 4G or LTE radio, and it actually will let you. It does some pretty pretty cool things like letting you bond two individual vans with a single carrier without having to have two separate devices or two separate SIM cards. That's pretty cool. Um, I did I did we get 20 to 30 megabit upstream with that guy, and I have antennas on top of the trailer. All right, so Matt Moore saying he uses Cinegears 150M um, with the one Z150. That's in the same family as the other one that I that I bought that I couldn't get to work. So I can go ahead and talk about that a little bit. So uh, last year at NAB, by the way, I'm going to be at NAB next week as well. So if you guys happen to see me, stop and say hi. Um, 
at last year at NAB, I stopped by the Cinegears booth and I asked them, like, does your device support 1080p 3G level B? And they assured me, absolutely, yes, it does. And so I placed an order for one. This thing isn't getting video. Um, so absolutely, yes, it does. And turns out that that was not actually true. Uh, so I bought the unit, um, got it. I got it to sort of work with resolutions other than 1080p at 60 frames per second. And uh, we have video yet? No, we still don't have video. Yeah, I'm right, I'm right, Jack. Um, so yeah, the guy assured me absolutely that it does have uh, support for uh, three gig SDI level level B, and I bought it and got it and um, could not get it to work. So I emailed emailed support. They said, "Oh, you just need a firmware upgrade," and so um, they made me send it back. Um, they had me send it back at my expense, and it was gone. It was I, they had it for close to a month, even doing a firmware upgrade, and they sent it back to me. And not only did it not work with the level B, uh, it didn't work. Period. Um, like every video resolution, including the ones that it had supported before the firmware upgrade, um, were completely garbled, totally unusable. And when I emailed them for support, they just ignored me. Uh, I sent multiple emails to them. They they just uh, never responded, and I got kind of frustrated. Fortunately, I I bought it using PayPal, and I, once I contacted PayPal and told them that the company was had had basically ruined my product and were not answering my support calls, uh, PayPal uh, threatened to refund my money. And at that point, they finally responded. So uh, okay, so it's I'm not getting it to work any at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the issue is. Um, I tried try doing 1080 i here. See if that'll see if that'll actually work. Okay, monitor. And it's not letting me do that either. Bottom line is uh, because this outputs level B and this exception uh, expects level A. It's difficult to get them to work unless you're shooting uh, 1080i or 720p, which this camera doesn't actually output. So, so it, it's kind of a solution that has has a number of issues, um, and not something that I would necessarily recommend. Um, so yeah, let's see. Yeah, so a couple of people, other people are using Cinegears 150. I sure hope you guys are having better luck than I do because I could not get that to work and they were completely unwilling to help me. Um, and like I say, when I did have to do, when I did do the firmware upgrade, they made, they made me pay for shipping back to the, back to the, their company headquarters here in the U.S. And anyway, uh, so never ends asking what antennas I'm using. And he's talking about the uh, cellular radio uh, from. Wilson brand. I forget which is the exact model they are. I'm actually using NMO style antennas on the trailer and so I just got their NMO uh, NMO based antenna. So let me try the side SDI of the Ursa. Um, I can try it. Right now I've got the I've got my viewfinder on that. And it is outputting video. So I'm give that a try. Alright, so power and it still doesn't think it's receiving any video so yeah the incompatible basically basically so um, so you have to you have to do some crazy things um, the interesting thing at one point when I was sending 1080p level B to this uh, transmitter um, the receiver was outputting video and if I ran it if I've connected it directly to the switcher, it wouldn't work. But if I ran it through a decimator, even without doing any conversion on it, just basically loop in, loop out, that cleaned up the signal, and all of a sudden the switcher would recognize it. So um, I, I was able to sort of make it work um, with a level B output, but uh, it's awkward. There's a lot of different pieces have to be put into place in order to get, to get all this stuff to work. So uh, it's, the bottom line is if you're shooting 1080p 60 frames per second and you're using either a Blackmagic or a Sony camcorder, um, it's 
difficult to get it to work. Um, so, yeah, it's not not exactly what I would call uh, an easy solution. You know, if you're doing level A or you're shooting anything less than 50 frames per second, these actually work okay. Um, so, no, that's not much of an issue. But considering I do 60 frames per second for, for most productions that I do, that's kind of an issue. Especially, I mean, the main reason, one of the main reasons I got a wireless system at all was so I could do sporting events and have a camera sort of roaming around on the field. And uh, sporting events, I always shoot the 60, 60 frames per second. You don't want to do anything less than that because of all the motion that's going on, uh, especially if you have, like, slow motion instant replay involved. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you're trying to do 60 frames per second and you've got a camera that does 3G level level B, it's, it's quite difficult to pull. So... Atomic saying that the video was working for a little bit. Did I, did I miss it? I haven't seen it flicker on, but I haven't been monitoring the switcher feed. So, all right, so any other questions here? So, yes, I am having terrible luck with transmitters. It's been kind of a nightmare. Um, so one, one thing I've noticed is that most of the um, less expensive wireless solutions that are out there, including this, including the Cinegears, they're all the same thing internally. It's like there's a company in China that's making, making all these different products, and then each of these manufacturers adds a little bit of extra firmware to it and puts their own casing on it and their own power supplies and all the other kind of stuff. But internally, they're pretty much the same thing. If you, and the graphics coming out of them are the same. They have the same quirks. Um, so it's difficult to find something that works properly because they're all working, they all pretty much have the same, same issues. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, so a couple people talking about Teradek. Uh, yeah, so Matt Moore saying he's using VMix with an AJA card, not Blackmagic. That that could absolutely be the difference. AJA, it's I believe they're level the 3G level A again, and Blackmagic is per, mostly level B. Um, the Switcher supports level B, but I've got this signal going through a couple other pieces of equipment that don't, so I, I kind of have to have level B support. Uh, and so, so Ben's talking about the Teradek Bolt and how he's never had problems. Uh, Teradek bolts, they're actually the same thing. Um, I've used, I've actually used those in a rental situation, and they are pretty much exactly the same as these things. I mean, the main difference with them um, is whether I'm going to just, I'm going to disconnect this. Um, the main difference with them is, is um, like the different types of antennas and things like things like that that they. Uh, that's really stuck on there. I'll plug it over here. Um, so, anyway, uh, sounds, sounds like you guys here in the chat room have actually used a few different solutions, and you've had better luck than I have. Uh, how many of you actually are doing 60 frames per second? Because um, that seems to be the differentiator that seems to break a lot of these systems. Are any of you doing that? And the stable saying most wireless internals are made by Aminmon. Am Am how do you say that? Aminmon? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with those. I'm sure they're just kind of one of those companies that doesn't do anything re uh, for end users so but yeah they're they're these basically are all the same in, including like the Teradek bolt so you know some have better antennas and some tweak the firmware a little bit but they are more or less the same thing until you get into the systems that are like five grand and up a piece and for the kind of productions I'm doing that's just kind of out, outside my budget so Say Matt saying he uses 60 for rodeos. Yeah, anything, anything. Okay, you guys, so, so Ben's talking about 60i. Yeah, 60i is an entirely different deal. So it's that's still HD SDI. You're not talking, stepping up to three gig SDI on that. So um, I don't, I don't do interlace ever anymore. If, if I mean, if I have to do interlace for final delivery, I do, I do a conversion from progressive to interlace at the very last second. Um, if you ever have to, if you've ever done slow mo with interlace, you know, you understand why. I don't do that, so. Uh, so since so Cinder's asking what Teradek encoder I'm using, it's, it's the VIDIU, V-I-D-I-U. Uh, I would have bought the Pro, but it didn't exist when I got mine. I've had this a couple of years. Uh, so, 
Do you guys have any other questions about this? Um, it's not a perfect solution. Oh, um, I did want to talk a little bit about how I do intercom with this because this system doesn't actually have audio at all. And so what I do, let me get this off, off the table here. Um, I use what is a wireless in-ear monitor system. So the sort of thing you normally see musicians wearing on stage so they can hear themselves or whatever so this one is if you know if you watch my channel you know i use a lot of akg gear this this is actually an older one this is the ibm um series 4 it's the sst4 for the transmitter and then for the receivers they are the got stuck on the velcro here so the receiver is the ibm spr4 and the camera operator wears this on their belt. They plug in a headset here. And then for audio from the camera operator back to me, I use two-way radios. Like uh, just simple, the same two-way radios we use when we're actually setting up. And then I have a, a two-way radio receiver plugged into the intercom system. And so anytime they transmit, uh, that their audio gets uh, sent to the, to the intercom system. So, and so there, I know there are systems out there that have they have intercoms built into them, but that's when you, that's another time, one of those things where you get into big, big budgets. So, um, so, yeah, Cinegears has a couple that have, that have intercom. They have Tally as well. I wouldn't have a way to get Tally into them, at least not affordably. Blackmagic kind of, they do, they're doing a proprietary, uh, it's a proprietary system for, for their Tally, so, um, so, Hollyland Cosmo, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it's, it's a tender saying it's the same as a Cinegear system. So, they're they all these systems about segment in the market, they're really the same thing. Um, so you know, they're, they're branded differently, marketed differently, different cases, different antennas, but yeah, they're they're still here. So, um, yeah, so Tom is saying walkie talkies. Yeah, the thing about walkie talkies is it's difficult for the director to use walkie talkies because when I'm directing, I'm talking the whole time. So if I had to key down and press the button every single time, that would be quite often. Um, never end saying using Dante for comms. I, I eventually want to get to the point where I incorporate Dante into my comms. So, okay, so uh, AJA Corvid 88 supports a HD 24. 2398, 24, 25, 29, 97, 30, 50, AB, 59, AB, 60, AB. That's interesting. Uh, oh, I may have to look into that. So, um, so yeah. Uh, Another thing you got to watch out for is with these systems, like they'll have limits. Like this one, you're only able to run two at once. So even if I had four cameras, I'd only four cameras roving around, I'd only be able to use two uh, wirelessly using this system. So some of the, more, the higher end systems will use more, like the Cinegear system that I purchased, which by the way was the uh, Ghost Eye 600M. Um, um, so that, that one, I believe, you can use four at a time. And the more expensive they are, they are sort of like with wireless microphones, the more you can use simultaneously. Um, so, Unity you know, Intercom, EarTech. Yeah, I looked at the EarTech, but I couldn't find an easy way to interface it with my system. So that would be nice to have that, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see an obvious solution for how to interface the audio from my my existing Intercom system. So, so anyway, bottom line, um, I've sort of settled on this IDX CW3. Uh, in some ways, I'd wish I'd purchased the CW1, CW1, which has HDMI instead of SDI, because the camera I use has HDMI. But then I'm still doing a converter on the other end, so um, not really saving a lot. And the other part of the problem with the CW1 doesn't have any external antennas, so you're limited to whatever sort of uh, gain you can get uh, just with the built-in antennas. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, Perspective Caribbean, this is the IDX CW3. And I also talked about the Cinegears Ghost Eye 600M that I purchased that was an absolute disaster. So, uh, asking if I had purchased or used the Ursa Mini Pro Broadcast. I have not. Um, I, once I looked into the specs on it, I decided it wasn't for me. 
Its low light sensitivity is basically identical, at least it has the same specs as the Ursa Mini and the Ursa Mini Pro, which basically means not anywhere near sensitive enough for the sort of things I'm doing. Like even when I, you know, I've got my Ursa Mini here. Even when I put a T15 lens on this guy, it's there's still a lot of events that I shoot where that isn't enough light, and in, in that case, you're still dealing with the insanely shallow depth of field that you get with a, with a, the equivalent of an f f14 lens. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of I kind of gave up on the Ursa broadcast when I after I read the spec sheet on it. So, all right. Um, yeah, so if, if you guys have any experience with, with wireless systems that actually work well with 3G level B for 1080p at 60 frames per second, let me know because, you know, I'm still, I'm still searching, trying to find something that, that actually works, works well. Uh, I'm able to work this, make this work well enough. Um, unfortunately, though, because it doesn't have separate antennas on the receiver, I know my range is going to be limited. And uh, with the awful resync issues that the, all these things, all these systems have, that's kind of a deal breaker. And you go out of range and it can take 60 seconds or longer to reconnect. So, um, Armand asking if I've ever used the, end of the intercom. No, I have not. It's like the, intercom, the only intercom that I have used um, recently within the last couple of years is the Blackmagic system. So, Cinegear specs, yeah, this, this is the problem. The Cinegear specs say it supports 3G level, 3G SDI level, or Type A and Type B. It doesn't. And that, I've, I've gone round and round with the, with the with the not just the not just the tech support guys but the actual the guys who actually run the company here in the US and they, they assure me that it works and then I, I sent my unit in for firmware upgrade and made it worse made it far far worse and they uh, and so, so so tenders asking how I deal with the delay in wireless video and syncing it with the direct audios and direct audio, direct camera direct audio uh, these systems the delay is only one millisecond, so there's no additional delay from the wireless system. So, um, and that's saying I maybe got a dud. Well, it's possible, but it worked fine according to their their specs before I sent it in for the firmware upgrade. So their their firmware upgrade just screwed it up, and then they totally stopped responding to my to my emails. So at that point, once I threatened, uh, once once I actually filed a claim with PayPal, they finally did email me. But uh, for the most part, they just ignored me, and so I'm not a happy camper with them. So anyway, um, so I mentioned earlier, but I am going to be at NAB next week. So if you guys happen to be there and run into me, just stop in and say hi. Um, I'll, I'll probably be focusing my time in Sony, Canon, Adobe, Blackmagic. Uh, the big ones that are always there, and I want to look at some of the new so newer Sony cameras, and I want to talk to some of the Blackmagic guys. They've got a Blackmagic has a developer uh, thing, booth that they've set up this year, and I'll, I'll be attending at least a handful of those those events. So, um, so yeah, if, if you are if you guys are going to NAB, look out for me and say hi if you run into me. So, you know what I look like, but I don't know what you look like, so you'll have to you'll have to approach me. So. Yeah, and NAB, NAB is in Vegas, which is only about five-hour drive from where I live, and so I go pretty much every year. I've I've gone every year for the last I want to say eight years, with maybe one year that I that I had to skip it. But uh, yeah, I've been going for my first first year. I went was 2005, so it's it's been it's been a few years. And I always it's always great to talk to, and quite often they have actually have guys who the guys who are designing these products there at, at the show and so if you if i need to talk if i have tech questions um you can ask the guys who actually designed the, the, the equipment so that at least that's the case with a smaller a lot of the smaller vendors some of the bigger vendors that's not necessarily true but the smaller vendors like for example my my clock that you guys have have seen um i met the owner at nab last year and i could tell he knew what he was talking about so um I purchased from him just because he was totally upfront, totally honest, and he knew his stuff. All right. So, uh, Kenny asking if I have if I see NDI in my in my future. Um, likely not, to be honest. I mean, if I'm going to go IP, 
I will probably skip NDI and go to full professional uh, IP solution, but that's that's years and years down the road. It's not, not nothing anytime soon. Um, so I, I hear that most people like NDI, but I'm I'm still iffy on it. So. Yeah, BMD does not support NDI, uh, at least not currently. I, the, one of the main reasons I don't do NDI is because like, I'm using fiber, and it's bi-directional, so it's doing video, comms, audio, uh, tally, all on one cable. So, uh, it makes setup a breeze. You guys, I think I've probably mentioned this, but quite often we get to events we're able to set up in less than a half hour. So the time we roll until the time we're able to, to go live, it's less than a half hour. And that, that, we're talking like three, four, five cameras. So, yeah, I'm not sure that I would be able to pull that off with, with, uh, with many of those other solutions other than the fiber that I'm currently using. So. Yeah, it's, it never ends. Saying and network network issues and NDI. Yeah, that's which one less thing to troubleshoot if I if I'm not using it. So and it does introduce some latency as well. It's not a lot, but it does introduce some. And I I, I do iMag a lot, and so I very conscious, uh, very conscious of of any sort of latency that's introduced. So with NDI and Dante one fiber into a breakout box. Yep, yeah, that is that's, that is the advantage. Uh, you're limited on how many cameras you can do that with that, though. The NDI, from what I understand, a gigabit. And if you had more than a handful of cameras, you'd saturate your connection, especially if you got Dante going on as well. So. So. You guys have any other questions for me? If not, uh, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're at NAB, stop in and say hi. Um, So, but uh, bottom line is wireless is still one of those areas that it's, we don't have any simple solutions in this segment of the market. If you're doing high-end broadcast, yeah, they got solutions all, all, like crazy as long as you're willing to pay for them. Um, but when you're dealing with this sort of budget segment of the market, we're kind of still, things are still a little rough around the edges. So, um, Yeah, uh, my my advice, except Thomas is asking, my NDI, um, I'd say go fiber, uh, full bandwidth, and it's feature proof. I mean, you can go, you can absolutely do 4K, even 120 frames per second eventually over fiber, so you're not having to replace any of that infrastructure. So, so anyway, uh, do thank you guys for watching. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm getting any other, gonna get any other, get. Don't know if I'm going to get any other videos out before I go to NAB next week. So, so uh, I'm 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 probably going to be doing some videos from NAB. We'll see if we'll see how much time I got and how much whether I'm willing to lug a camera around with me or not. But uh, maybe I'll have some videos for you guys. So um, just pay attention and you know, if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. Uh, Matt asking if I ever have trouble with fiber connections going bad. No, I have never. I have not. I've had a, I've had one or two fiber cables going bad, but but none of the equipment. So, so anyway. All right. Thanks for guys for watching, and um, I'll talk to you later.